my three things that you and your organization needs to do in order to maximize sales from the website, from your website. Uh, here they are, I'll, I'll, I'll cover each one of these off as we go, but first of all, get over yourself. <laughs> Secondly, learn to listen to your customers, to start, to start to find a way of listening to what they have to say to you. And then thirdly, act upon what you hear. In fact, that third point, uh, following on from my theme, is perhaps the hardest of all. Most advice you can get out there from agencies or from learned consultants, even like myself, uh, is hopelessly biased in terms of its, it, its opinion because it will tend to come from a point of view about what you should be buying. So where, you know, where do you go and get a good idea about what consumers want and need from your website? Well, of course, you know what I'm going to say next. You need to engage a little more about listening to and picking up from consumers, your real customers, what it is they're doing online, on your site, but also other people's sites, and start using that as information that changes the way that you act. I know a big uh, building society that uses the customer comments and feedback from its website as one of the main sources of development for its site. Well, of course, the people who can take the time and are agitated enough to give their opinions proactively to, to the company are probably not representative of the, of the silent majority of people who are using the site. So it's very, very easy to skew uh, what you're hearing and therefore deciding what you do um, according to who you're listening to. So make, make sure you take the time to get people who are truly representative of your customer base. So what to do about it? Well, here's sort of five, five things that, in, in my view, uh, are priorities for people when thinking about developing a uh, site. I'll rattle through them. So number one, uh, look and act what I would call normal in the early seconds of interaction. What that often simply boils down to is to avoid too much promotional content or very urgent calls to action in those landing pages, the places where people come to your site and start to have a look around because probably what they're trying to do is find a very focused piece of information. And I think it's, it's a really obvious thing to say, but just to remember that people have a choice. They have a choice to either spend another five seconds on your site trying to find what it is they came for, or they can go away. And they've got lots of other sites that they can go to, and it's, it's really easy to lose sight of that. It's really easy to think about consumers being highly committed to visiting your site and to finding information, but very rarely is that true. Respect shoppers' channel choice and their anonymity. So that, yeah, the rule here, don't try and push shoppers into your preferred channel until they are confident that they want to deepen the dialogue. In other words, give them, some, give them the comparison data that they came for, let them figure out themselves that it's hopelessly complicated, and then suggest that they call you. That might work. And the other point here is illustrating to capture no more personal data than is absolutely necessary to serve the current request. I don't think that you need my email, daytime, evening, telephone number, my date of birth in order to serve me with the information that I've arrived for. And so this is a signal to me that you're not respecting my rights, certainly not to anonymity, nor are they respecting perhaps my rights around data. Third point, answering reasonable questions. There are lots of reasonable questions that customers could ask. And those questions could be about something you don't want them to know about, about yeah, bank charges or about yeah, a, a, you know, a, a, a not particularly market-leading returns policy. But the fact that you don't put those, that information on the site means they can't buy. If you put information on your site, answer the questions, and okay, the information itself may not be flattering, but at least you put the information there on the site, well, you're still at the races. And so don't try and editorialize over the questions that consumers want answers to do research, understand what it, what it is they need to know in order to buy and give them that information, however flattering or not it is. Fourth, be persuasive at the appropriate time in the interaction. So uh, shoppers will ignore promotion, heavy calls to action and sales chat until this basic information need, this goal is met. But actually, once they've achieved that goal, they become actively much more interested in why you think you're good and why you think you should buy from that someone should buy from you rather than your competitors. Most companies' instincts is to shout and throw sales talk and promotions into the very first moments of interaction when people are extremely close-minded to them and then fail miserably to be persuasive around the point of sale or around the point of decision when people are really hungry for information about why you're good. Fifth point um, is around eliminating usability problems in forms and checkout processes. And the golden rule, really, around usability is don't throw away the user's work, which means if someone's committing time and energy into, say, typing in details into a form, um, then any form that 
and where perhaps when it enters an error state, chucks away that data and forces you to rekey it. Or if you want to go away to another page just to check the price on something before you buy it, come back and your form's been lost. Throwing away the user's work is a real quick way of losing a sale. Um, and so really have a good hard look at the processes in your site that could, that, that, where that could happen. And when I'm trying to work out what's happening on a site and what consumers are need, need and want out of a site, the first thing I would tend to say start with is a site survey. And site surveys, it's very easy for them to get out of control and start asking the wrong sort of question. They should be very focused on who is coming to this site, why are they coming to the site, their objectives. And yes, you can ask some very basic questions about the level of satisfaction with their visit. But really, a site survey is only about who's coming here and why. User depth interviews are one-to-one -one research interviews with representative users where you ask them to essentially ask them to use the site, set, set them tasks to perform, and observe them using and interacting with the site. It's a lot richer, of course, a way of gathering information about uh, usage than a site survey or by looking at uh, your web logs. It's a really good way of understanding what my jargon, industry jargon, is context of use, which is kind of how do people use sites like this in the context of making a purchase decision. So to summarize, start thinking about what customers want and prefer as central, not coincidental to your design process. Start a structured program of research and feedback, so make it representative, make it thorough, uh, but do it, and do it regularly. And then the most difficult challenge, change the way your organization thinks and acts so that the, you know, what the customer needs is what you actually deliver as an organization, and not just on the website, but in the marketing before it, and in the sales and service infrastructure beyond it.